Ismael Cardova. You might recognize this name. He played the elf in the Amazon Prime show Rings of Power, which was probably the worst rendition of literally anything Lord of the Rings ever because it was so woke and for the modern audience, it was actually toxic to watch. But hey, you know what? Female powerful characters or whatever work in somebody's life, I guess, if you're a weak man or something like that. But moving forward, he is a decent physique. And a lot of people pointed it out in the show, a lot of women in particular thought he was very attractive. Now his inclusion within the movie makes a significant representation that is different from Tolkien's previous universal showings because he was kind of one of the first elves of color <laughs> to be included in the franchise, which wild. I hate how like these things always have to be pointed out by the industry when, the, you know, like 20 years ago we had a movie Blade that was all about a black vampire and it was one of the coolest fucking movies I've ever seen and no one made it about race and it seemingly never was an issue and everyone loved the movie. There's only been one Blade there's only ever gonna be one blade. But you make it all about politics, suddenly no one likes the shit. <laughs> But anyways, for this role, you had to build a decent physique to portray the role of a really powerful elven warrior. And he seems to be about the only one on the entire cast of the entire movie that actually attempted to build a solid physique for the role. He undertook full body training with some rigorous workouts to accomplish demanding fight scenes and essentially complete these stunts that he needed to do for the show, which is basically a lot of flipping around and such. Now, if you don't know what I'm talking about with the whole woke inclusivity thing, the Rings of Power became more of a political TV show than it was a Tolkien's lore telling and it was a pretty disappointing thing because I think a lot of us my age at least 20 to 30s grew up on Lord of the Rings as one of the primary modes of ed I was gonna say edutainment education in a weird way like it, it told stories about people who had amazing egos and ethics and and things that truly I remember to this day even though I watched those when I was like 15 you know what I mean like they stick with you and they still resonate with my character to this day beautiful stories beautiful writing and then we have this slop that came out which was just basically a political bamboozlement of what Tolkien's lore is supposed to be about whether that's man on man interactions they them interactions I mean you name it the fucking show had it which is just wild but what we're gonna do today is view his workout specifically Ismail Cordova or the elf I forgot how to pronounce his name Aron Deer on Aron Deer Aron Deer Aron Deer so let's see what this is all about we have a men's health publication here talking about his full body workout routine to train like a motherfucking elf let's go hey my name is ismael cruz cordova and i'm gonna be showing you my holy christ i i'm gonna be real didn't expect him to actually sound like that when i have only seen him in that specific franchise of a movie or series that blows my mind some guys are like in love with weight training and i used to not get it i used to not get it and then when i actually finally got to the gym and started properly doing weight training I understood it. Do you see those boots? Hugging and I love spinning. I'm that guy in the front row that's like going like that and going with the music. No hotel has the same kind of gym. Some of them don't have a gym. Some of them just have dumbbells. Some of them just... I feel like when you're on these multi-million dollar production teams, you should probably have a gym for your actors at like a bare minimum. Uh, I think Lord of the Rings, Rings Power had one of the biggest budgets in all of history when it relates to a series. And to hear that they couldn't even provide a gym, that's crazy, actually. Like, I was in the military and we got out in the middle of nowhere sometimes and we would have gyms sometimes it would just be like plates and dumbbells out in the open air of some place and you get what you could done but uh we at least got it which is crazy to think that they had a higher budget than our entire unit and still couldn't offer up a gym just have a, like a band in a dusty corner so i have to consistently be thinking how to make my workouts work I could have swore. I'm not trying to be rude. But he looked very them there, okay? I'm thinking there might be more going on to his story when I was talking about the whole woke thing that I didn't actually even pick up on until just now, if you catch my drift. Enough talking. Let's just get into the workout. Oh my god. You have to get that body warm. You have to make your muscles, you know, pliable. Okay, let's just explain this really quick because I think it's important. Getting your muscles warm is sort of a fallacy. Yes, you can get your muscles warm and you do, in some sense, decompact a lot of tissues when you're warmer versus hotter. But you also have to remember, like, your body temperature is almost at 100 degrees 24 7, no matter what kind of temperatures you're in. Yes, it's good to warm up the extremities, but here's a really useful tip to save some time and to just not look ignorant shadow boxing when you've never boxed in your life in the middle of the gym let's say it's it's leg day and your first movement is a leg extension 
extension. Just throwing this out there. It might not be, but same thing applies for whatever day it is or whatever exercise you choose. How I would go about this is to literally do that movement. Do it at a sub-maximal weight. Do it for many more repetitions than you would actually do within the giving working set. So for example, your working set might be designed to be 10 to 12 repetitions, but this warm-up set is going to be essentially double that or sometimes even triple, but you're moving very sub-maximal weight and you're not actually bringing the muscle to failure. You're just letting blood flow in the muscle and essentially warming it up. Now, there's a big reason why this is more advantageous in terms of warming up compared to whatever he's doing right now, and that's because your body gets to learn the patterns that it's going through, the motor patterns. And more importantly, part of weightlifting is a learning process. Your body has to learn how to move through certain ranges of motion. And the more repetition that you get through moving your body through those ranges of motion, the more learning that it can do. And that means it can activate more motor units in a given exercise, thus making you stronger, thus letting you apply more mechanical tension to the specific muscle group that you're training. With this case, you're doing some form of dynamic warm up or something <laughs> like that, which is great, but it has no correlation to the actual training that you're going to be typically doing, especially if you're looking to maximize hypertrophy. So don't be that guy that shadow boxes in the corner when you've never actually taken a real boxing class and you just look like a doofus in the gym that has no bags or isn't a boxing gym, but you're just shadow boxing in the corner. It's really embarrassing, honestly. Sorry, it's gonna look, guys. Calm down. Okay, I have to say this now in every video. It's gonna be okay. Okay, no one's no one's coming after you. No one's hurting your feelings, bro. Breathe. If you're that guy, I'm sorry. Okay, I didn't mean to hurt your feelings. Let's go. Warm up. I do like to just start moving my body. For me, I mean, I like to box, so I I start doing some. This form, I'll be real, is absolutely dog shit. He would instantly lose a fight. And then I go into my stretches, working. I mean, all parts I have to do, neck, shoulders. Really bad idea to do stretches before lifting, actually, or performing any resistance training, because consider it like a rubber band. When you pre-stretch a rubber band, it becomes thinner, right? So like, I wish I had a rubber band to display what this might look like, but think about this in terms of your tendons and ligaments. Greg Doucette's probably gonna respond to this video and be like, this guy's a fucking idiot, but hear me out. Stop! being a moron you take a rubber band and you stretch it out what happens to the surface area of that rubber band in the density of it okay it gets thinner right there's less surface area meaning the integrity of that rubber band is much less it's less strong because there's less of it now you stretch that rubber band out then you apply load on each end how much more likely is that rubber band to snap pretty more like a lot likely to be honest and so you go into this workout with a stretched tendon ligament or even muscle fibers that are much weaker than they would have been prior to stretching out and you really screwed the pooch so uh, that leads to muscle tears. That leads to tendons and ligaments going haywire, either micro tears or big, big tears that you want to avoid. Again, typically what I recommend people do is just warm up in the active range of motion that you're going to be training. So if you're doing squats, why don't you warm up with the barbell and get your stretching in dynamically through squatting with the barbell? not heavy loads, you're not doing a working set, but you're just doing enough to feel what you're doing, to get your body to stretch out and to demand from it, but not to work it out necessarily. You're just feeling the movement out. This is how you should train. Uh, mobility as well, hips, opening the hips, knees, ankles, also, just want to be very clear here too, even if you were to statically stretch like this, like this for instance, uh, he holds it for about a whole one second. You would want to be doing this if you're actually going to get benefits from stretching for at least 30 to 45 seconds. That's like the standard piece of advice, at least. When you're stunting, you use your entire body to absorb, you know, all Come on, guys. the whiplash. Extremely bored of getting on a treadmill or a, uh, what are you, those little step ladder, the ladder thingies, anything like that. So a little bit of like dancing for like 20 minutes. It's like moving, put some music. You start sweating, actually enjoying it, just dancing. Dance like nobody's watching. I mean, I like that idea. I don't think that's a bad piece of advice. I know a lot of people who struggle to do cardio because they're just standing on a treadmill or a Stairmaster for hours and what I like to do and I suggest that people do oftentimes is find a dynamic way to do cardio. I mean, dancing is one way to do that. Swimming is a great way to do that. I prefer doing, which is a little bit risky if you're actually a competitive professional athlete, but fighting sports, like if you do a two hour session of Muay Thai, that's probably gonna cover you for the entire week's worth of cardio. Do that three times a week and you're gonna be shredded by no time. So I agree, this is definitely a good statement. Okay, here we go, the actual workout. So the first move that I'm gonna be doing, plyo push-up, which strengthens your wrists. You have a fucking bench press right behind you, Doug. What, what are you doing? 
plyo push-ups strengthens your wrist you know what else strengthens your wrist holding heavy shit like anything that is heavy and you have to hold strengthens your wrist one of the best practices we did in the military actually a little key in for you guys when you hold a rifle or even a handgun you don't necessarily like we called it white knuckling the handgun because it's just you can still move your wrist if it's like i'm just clenching my wrist i can still move it like my, my hand you know i'm making a fist but if i clench my wrist like i'm flexing my wrist and i try to move my hand it's immovable and so we really worked on strengthening our wrists what we would do is sit in a barracks get all the newspapers we could and take them and just crumple up a newspaper with our hand and do that for like 20 fucking times your hand and arm would be so fucking swollen after that and your your grip strength just goes through the roof alternatively what we would do is simple things like uh rack pulls right like half deadlifts essentially that worked amazing for forearm and grip strength this isn't getting much of anything accomplished i'll be completely honest you're deleteriously impacting your joints due to heavy impact if you wanted to train effectively i would say do it in the safest way possible where you have the most stability and bracing and the most isolated variation of an exercise this is just some back to school bullshit shoulders and the core and it helps you with those muscles that you need to strengthen for a break fall it really doesn't help for shit i'll be honest with you all right, so the next move is gonna be dumbbell squat jumps. Again, there's a squat rack, brother. Just do some fucking squats, okay? If you have a barbell, you can get a much better workout than this. The dumbbell squat- Look, th this is, okay, let's hear his justification first. Like the landing environment for a wire work. They increase ankle stability and bone density in your ankles, knees, and hip joint. And it also challenges your core stability to maintain the body in an upright position. Who the fuck trains these people, man? Like, who is telling them this stuff? Sure, shearing forces cause bone mineralization or bone density to increase. Those shearing forces are the same that are applied when you're squatting or deadlifting or doing any of the compound variations that we've been talking about this whole video. You don't need to be jumping up and down to achieve bone mineral density increasing or stability in your ankles. People make this argument with football players a lot. Well, if they need to train functionally, why are they in the weight room? doing bodybuilder-esque exercises because they're training the muscle they're not training for functionality they go to practice to train for functionality they train the muscles when they're in the gym he is going to be on set doing the thing over and over and over again if he wants to actually get those benefits which you just said bone mineralization stability in the ankles core strength all that stuff lift heavy ass weight and you'll get it done like for sure that what you're doing with sub maximal weight with a half jump which is like barely any kind of like isometric tension you might as well just go to the fucking squat rack like honestly and do it with the barbell alone because that is quite literally the weight he's using and he's squatting down like a whole three inches he needs to be going parallel with the ground if he really as he also talked about wants to get knee strength developed he needs to be going at least parallel with the ground and here he's far far above parallel with the ground this exercise is the oh my god i'm not dumbbell shoulder fly and we use free weights and body weight and explosive movements for two reasons. You know, to create an environment for the body that mirrors the stunt and set work and because it just offers great flexibility. Okay, so first of all, why alternating? Could anyone explain this to me? What is the benefit of alternating? I could see the benefit of doing one arm at a time, but alternating really doesn't net you any proper benefit compared to doing just an, a, a single arm variation or just doing both arms at once. Key number one, using free weights isn't going to particularly improve your flexibility unless you're stretching but you know it would improve your flexibility with this movement something like a cable y lateral raise where you're carrying the cables in like a v-shape and you go up like this and you actually have to really focus on that internal rotation and the scapulas retracting and pull those muscles back you get a massive side delt pump and you get way more stimulation per net weight lifted plus you develop some flexibility through being able to actually get your arms back more because you, you see like a lot of bodybuilders right and they'll do this front double bicep but their arms are like this you want to be able to get your arms all the way back behind your head where you can't even see your fingers moving to do that you have to build the flexibility and guess what a wide lateral raise a great way to do that to build those lower traps to build that flexibility to build the stability in that overhand position this shit ain't doing nothing fam it doing nothing now i'm gonna be showing you a reverse lunge with jump my brothers just do a squat please okay i don't care what any trainer tells you i don't care if your mother swears by this movement if your father tells you he'll beat you if you don't do it if your brother is doing cocaine on the street and he says he'll only stop if you do this simply don't do this <laughs>
<laughs> just do a Bulgarian split squat. Again, there's a nice shiny barbell over there, even with resistance bands, right? Also dumbbells loaded everywhere. Great benches he could actually be using as stabilization for his other leg. He could be doing a single leg variation of anything really, but let's just say Bul Bulgarian split squats. Is it arguably doing anything different from what he's doing, the reverse lunge jump? And which one would you tell me is more optimal for building strength and conditioning, as well as developing bone mineralization and stability within the knees? I could tell you what my opinion is, which is it's the one that involves actually weight and not just jumping in the air like a maniac. Most jumps and landings are happening on one leg. And Again, if you want to create stability and strength within that one leg, bone mineralization, the things that would actually aid in protecting you, creating padding in a situation where you are falling, it would be to literally apply load to that leg. Lunge with the jump offers a great range of motion to increase mobility in your hip joint, but also strengthens each knee to support your body in a landing. These two following exercises are exercises that I use as well for bulking because for the next row, here we go. I I here we fucking go. Go a little bit bigger. These two exercises. Focus on oh Jesus Christ! Okay, the incline dumbbell. Great, love that exercise. Beautiful execution, beautiful form here. Looks like he's lifting some decent weight. Not really, but kind of. Love that. Like I think that is beautiful, and I'm so happy he's doing this. This is practical. But the other movement he just showed, which we'll probably cut to here in a second, not so practical. And the bent. This alternating bent over rows Ugh, you have a barbell brother you have a barbell back there just do barbell bent over rows you would develop more posterior control you would develop greater glute and hamstring strength you would also be training your back efficiently and to be quite frank with you brother you're standing goddamn straight up you're not going to get any back movements pulling from a straight up position you might as well just be doing another variation of a side lateral or a rear delt movement like for sure if you wanted to use these this bent over row variation with dumbbells first of all don't do alternating either do one arm or both arms then lay down on that bench press in the back there that you were just using for inclines with your chest facing forward hands hanging down and use that as your chest support to actually row those dumbbells with your elbows out because doing this isn't targeting what you're saying is targeting which is your upper back and the fucking wrist supination as you pull back just stay supinated you'll find that it creates so much more tension within the lat when you supinate and stay supinated through the full range of motion like astronomical amounts of tension please just try this yourself supinate when you pull back and stay supinated don't rotate forward this does nothing for you supinate stay supinated stay stupinated the visual there's aesthetics involved you know so you're shaping your character brother where are the aesthetics you're shaping your body also based on the character so i have to make sure that my fitness level is at the top of what i can do and uh my mobility as well they really you can tell they just sprayed him with a bottle of mist they do this a lot in photo shoots because his face is wet but he has no sweat stains on his whole entire body nothing on his pants his shirt or anything uh, nor is the perspiration like coming off of his chest you don't see any on his neck it's literally just on his face you can tell they just like spray that shit that i'm safe so that i can continue oh wow he's not sweaty here sure. And also, I want to make sure that I'm safe so that I can continue working and living and being healthy and enjoying my life. If you want. Facts, bro. That's facts. You got to work out to make sure you're staying healthy and can live your life. He was, he was mentioning a lot about flexibility and how he's doing his movements for flexibility. You know who's extremely flexible but doesn't do any of this? It's Juji Mufu. Now, I'm sure you guys have seen Juji. He's extremely infamous. Probably one of the coolest fucking characters on the world. Honestly, so fucking strong. It's incredible. He is one of the most flexible human beings I've ever seen in person. And I don't understand how the hell he does it. Look, this man is lifting gates that neither you or I could ever comprehend. Like it's a fucking pond stone and he's just doing it for fun. Yet at the same time, he's one of the most flexible human beings ever. And so the whole argument with like, you need to be doing these movements to stay flexible and safe and mobile is just absolute garbage when you have really great cases like Juju Mufu who can do some insane things with his body and I'm failing to find any kind of content that would show you. Here we go. We just gave a flexibility seminar here at Swiss. Look at this man. And it's based off my book, Legendary Flexibility. You can go to jujimusu.com. And now we're gonna see if Brian Shaw can touch his toes. <laughs> what about pressing strength? Okay. Wow. You know, if you, your legs bend a little bit, just start to straighten them in the end. Okay. Is Brian flexible? I don't know. Is that flexible? What do you think? I'll get it here. Like, look at this man. I step out and I'll wear a bird mask when I do it. 
Yeah. And, and then I'll dump it and get the hell out of there because it's hard. But 285. That's my PR. I think I did more now. That's a few years ago. Is that just one side? Is he lifting body weight? Is he? And look, I get he's selling a stretching program, but he'll be the first to tell you in that stretching program, which I've actually read, that you simply just lift weights because everybody's flexible. He thinks bodybuilders are one of the most flexible people in the world, actually. And all it takes is a little bit of training by using weight to load your muscles through certain ranges of motion. But anyways, is this workout good? No, it's absolutely not. And I don't mean to be rude, but it's just a very valid point. And I feel like we see this all the time with these athletes or superstars where their own personalized workouts are garbage and for whatever reason they try to piece them together in any kind of way or form that they can and it just never never works out but let me know what you think down below am i just a maniac Could i hurt your feelings <laughs> Uh, the more you let me know down below, the more I actually love to read the comments, hate or proud comments that are happy to be a member of this channel. I like them both and I love you all for being here. Either hate or love, I still love you. Uh, one thing that I would ask as a favor though, is that if you do enjoy this content, please drop a subscribe. It helps me out a ton. It's free to you and it only takes a couple seconds and it does truly mean the world to me. Like seriously, you guys, I appreciate it. And I do wanna stop here and take a moment for all those who made it to the end of the video. When I say this, I mean it so sincerely, it, I can't even begin to formulate words to describe how I feel, but I do appreciate those of you who have stayed on this channel, watched every video because there are those of you out there. I can see the analytics. A lot of my videos are returning subscribers watching the videos and it means the world to me. So I appreciate you and I appreciate you staking the time out of your day to watch these videos because time is our most valuable asset and you could be doing it watching other people's videos. You could be spending it doing anything else, but yet you choose to watch these videos, which does mean the world to me. And I wish I could provide more through this virtual basis barrier that we have. Maybe one day I will be able to, but I sincerely appreciate it. It means the world to me. It keeps me motivated to keep doing this every single day and whenever I can, more than I think you could ever realize. So I appreciate you. I value you. And I know days might be tough for you and they are often tough, but it's the hardest path that's worth it to walk. And if you can just be the man that walks the furthest, you'll have written a story by the end of that path that's worth reading 12 times over again. Um, so keep going, whatever your struggles are, whatever you are dealing with is, is the weight on your shoulders just don't drop that weight unnecessarily keep holding it a little bit longer keep pushing through things that seemingly can't be solved because there is brighter days and they're hard to look for and they're hard to even believe in existence of um, but they are there and all you got to do is just keep moving man it's a hard day every day but it is one more day you get to live and that's a good thing i'll see you in the next video